Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're working on a problem that surfaced in the last couple of days in our tunnel. Our kale crop, at first I thought was getting hit by slugs, and so I put out some slug bait on Sunday night. But when I came back in Monday morning, the damage to the leaves were just incredible. And on a closer inspection, what I began to find out is we had an infestation of what you call cabbage fly moth or cabbage loopers. Those little green worms that are about this big and they have various stages of their larval development, and, but when they get to the stage just before they're gonna turn into a moth, they uh, can be incredibly devastating to um, leaves of crucifers like cabbages and broccolis and kale and things like that. So I had this massive amount of damage in the span of like one night. And I looked at it and I go, well, I've got some BT, I could try that method but I'm really trying to use the Jadam practices. So I wanted to go a different route. And what I did is I mixed up some of the Jadam natural pesticide solution and I applied it and got a really good result in the first like 10, 15 minutes at a lot of worms just dropping off dead. And so what I, I'm kind of following up again today with another application a few days later and we're down now when I checked this morning we still have a few left on there that I'm going to take care of today and we also uh, ended up because now we have favorable temperature situation we started to notice that there's some aphids also building in there so I'm going to be kind of doing a dual purpose and nail them both so I wanted to walk you guys along with how I mix this stuff up and how I'm applying this on a very small scale um, and you can, sh I'll show you the kind of the results and show you the worms that are attacking things and, and, uh, we can just kind of walk through the whole process. So let's start with, uh, testing our water because it's just, though you don't have to do this every time, but I wanted to show you guys the difference between distilled water, rain water, and our well water in terms of how well the Jadam wetting agent, which is a surfactant, is a, it's, it's in the form of insecticidal soap. It's just... Castile soap, basically, and how uh, well it mixes with the water. Uh, it, it really, the way you determine whether it's mixing well is, is the water clear or cloudy once you put in maybe like a milliliter and like um, 50, 60 milliliters of water and kind of give it a good shake, you know, and it, it, it'll get some foam on the top. But the question is, is the water itself still clear or is it um, actually kind of cloudy? If it's cloudy, what it means is it's not gonna work as well spreading on the leaf of the plant. And it's real important that, that the wetting agent is equally you know, spread and doesn't, doesn't uh, beat up on the leaf and you end up with concentrations in certain spots and then no coverage in other spots. That's a great way for things like little insect aids or eggs or aphids or things like that to escape. So, it's real important that the quality of the water is good. It could either be distilled, it could be soft water, or in, in some cases, rainwater. So I'm kind of doing a test. I don't have really good, clean rainwater, but I wanted to show you guys at least the difference between our well water and the distilled water. So let's take a look. Okay, what you're seeing here is, is the one on the far right, it's, it's the lower amount, that's the distilled water. And when you really look at it, you can see that it's actually clear. The one in the center is rainwater. It had a little bit of turbidity to it because there was some small amounts of, um, I don't know, I guess debris or dirt that was in the container that I collected the rainwater from. Uh, but it's really not very cloudy from the standpoint of, of you, when you look at the one that's on the far left, you can definitely see that the water itself is cloudy. That's our well water. So the best at this point is to, you know, use distilled water and then in some way I've got to figure out how to filter the rainwater. So I'm going to be collecting rainwater and filter that out with a homemade filter so I can get the, you know, the impurities out of it and use that in the future. So, so again, I, what I can do is I can collect rainwater during this period of time in my rainy season and set it aside in a rain barrel and use it during the course of the regular season instead of buying a soft water conditioner or by uh, distilled water. All right, so what we're gonna use today 
to make up this in, this uh, solution is we're going to use uh, the main components are going to be um, our eucalyptus extract that we made and there's a video on that you can go back and check it out you can use sunchoke you can use ginkgo you can use bracken fern root uh, there's a number of different things things that you may find that naturally on your property that have very little insect attack to them might make it a great opportunity to make an extract that insects just don't like this is going to act more not so much to knock down the insects but it's definitely going to end up being a repellent and it's going to have some chemical properties that are going to irritate the pest the second thing we're going to use is let me get this here okay we've got basalt rock dust powder now this is going to be used to be um, part of the solution and it's very fine what we're going to do is we're going to take like in this particular case we're mixing up a batch of two liters of spray so we're going to use approximately four grams of this rock dust and then use uh, 30 times the amount in, in distilled water to mix it up so in essence a gram is equivalent to a cubic centimeter that's what a gram is it's one cubic centimeter of water that's how they came up with it so which is also the same as a milliliter so hey fun fun with you know the metric system right so basically what we're saying here is it to take four grams of this would be four cubic centimeters of it and it, or the equivalent to four cubic centimeters of water and and then what i'll do is i'll just say well okay so that's the same as four milliliters and i'll just say 30 times so i'm going to put in roughly 120 150 milliliters of water in it to mix it up now what we're doing when we're mixing this up is we are actually um, just trying to get it so it mixes up first then we set it aside and we let that settle so any of the heavy particulates in the basalt are also going to settle out and what are going to be left are really fine things that are left in suspension and that's the perfect stuff to put in through a sprayer because you're not going to clog your nozzles but at the same time, it's going to act on the uh, surface of the insect as, uh, as, as the wetting agent and the other things begin to dry. This is going to be an extreme irritant to them and it will help get into their actual softer skin. So it really works uh, well when you put it in, you know, without, you know, don't, don't put in the heavy stuff. Don't just don't mix it up and then throw it in your sprayer because you're going to get sediments that are going to block your sprayer and you won't get the, uh, well, you'll be really frustrated. <laughs> uh, the other thing we're going to use is, um, now you, the rest, the recipe that was tested on these used a small amount of sodium hydroxide or you could use potassium hydroxide. Now potassium hydroxide, this is the same stuff that's used to make liquid soap. I mean, soap is basically made, it's, it's a form of lye. If this is a lye and it's going to be mixed with, um, you know, when you're making soap, mixed with a fatty oil like canola oil or olive oil or whatever, coconut oil. And that this is what will make a potassium hydroxide makes a liquid soap and sodium hydroxide makes a hard soap. So. This was actually the, one of the major components in making the Jadam wetting agent, which in essence is Castile soap. So if you go on the internet and you say, uh, Google Castile soap, what you're gonna see is that's a very pure uh, liquid soap that is basically just two, three components. It's got water in it, it's got potassium hydroxide in it, and a source of fat that's saponified. And that is uh, also, going to be used in the solution very very weak we're talking about taking four grams of this material and it's going to be diluted ultimately into two liters of solution so if you look at it and you say well what does two liters of a water solution look like well that's 2,000 milliliters or 2,000 grams so you're putting four grams of this into 2,000 so you're way way low so this is not caustic if you get it on your skin it's not going to burn you you know once it's in solution never touch this stuff with your bare skin so if you're using this material you got to use some kind of you know instrument to take it out 
whether it's plastic or stainless steel or something like that and mix it in glass you know basically the idea is is this is going to be an extreme irritant to soft skinned um, bugs yeah they don't have a hard exoskeleton so worms would classify in that slugs snails these kinds of things you know that have that have basically no chitin type of exoskeleton to them this is this is going to be um, an extreme irritant to them which will help again with basically slowing them down by 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 this stuff will get into inside of the insect itself over time as the wetting agent begins to dry and contract around it okay so the last thing we're going to be using in it is we're going to be using um, our wetting agent which is jadam wetting agent and i've got a uh, two gallon bucket of it over here i'm only going to be putting in on the wetting agent uh, approximately 60 uh, milliliters for two liters so the recipe would be 60 milliliters of wetting agent 60 milliliters of the extract um, we would then put in we're going to mix the four grams of this ahead of time in a small jar. We're gonna put it on our scale, mix it, put four grams into it, put approximately about 50 milliliters of water into it, let it dissolve completely uh, before we add it into our sprayer container. And, and then, of course, the last thing, as we talked about, was taking the rock dust uh, after it's been mixed in water, about 120 grams to four grams, just to get enough of it where it's very light solution. And that will go, we'll put the full 120 grams of the solution in into the sprayer. So you gotta think about it from the standpoint of, it's a little different with the rock dust going back and talking about it again, is we're just trying to get as much of the super fine stuff in suspended into suspension. And it doesn't matter if I'm putting in 130 milliliters or 120 or 110, you know, it's just an approximation right around 120. That full amount of that liquid with the solid settled out will go into the container. It's not really clear when you look at some of, of the uh, prescriptions that are in the book that, that say, oh, put the entire amount of the superfines that are suspended in solution in. You'll, you, you find that you say, oh, well, maybe I only put like 30 grams in or 30 milliliters in, or, you know, it, it's not clear. And so you're not putting the four grams of the rock dust in, you're putting in whatever is left suspended in solution into the two liters. Okay, so order of mixing. It, I think, you know, just it's really important to do it as a methodology. It's like, here's a two liter spray bottle. Okay, it's one of those little hand pump ones because I'm doing a real small area. But any spray container you're doing when you're gonna mix this into, whether it's a four gallon backpack sprayer or, or what, when you do the ratios, what you wanna do is you wanna, say you're gonna do a full four gallons. You're gonna to wanna to put in about two gallons, maybe three gallons of water, not all your water, because you're gonna to, you're going to put these things added in and then you're gonna to top it off to get to your four gallons. So think of it that way. So don't put four gallons of water in and then start mixing this stuff in. And in, in order to get it, you know, to the right levels of dilution for a couple of key components like the wetting agent and the extract and the sodium hydroxide, or in this case, potassium hydroxide, your final solution total is two liters. If you were to mix it after you put two liters of the water in, you're going to have more than two liters of spray. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's just kind of the basics of it. Um, I, what I do is I just kind of go in an order. I just like, I'll, I'll put, uh, I'll put like one and a half liters in gets me to about halfway up the thing. And then I'll put in my extract. And what I use is I use these little ink refill. These are like 12 milliliter, uh, plungers. They're supposedly not reusable, but they actually, you know, work pretty good. They got graduated milliliter marks on it, so you can kind of know where you're at. So a full charge of 12. In this case, I'm putting 60 milliliters in, so it's five. Five charges of this goes in. 
if you had something else, you know, which actually, you know, some kind of like measuring cup or something, you know, that had the correct milliliters on it, you could work it with that. But these are really great when you're mixing up small, small solutions. And um, once it's all mixed up, I'll go through the order. Extract, wetting agent, add in my sodium hydroxide, and then add in my, my suspended solid uh, rock dust. And that's it. So the formula is 60 mil of wetting agent, 60 mil of extract, 40, excuse me, four grams of, of uh, potassium or sodium hydroxide mixed in about 50 milliliter water, and then four grams of the rock dust mixed in with about 120 milliliter water. That's it. Shake it up well, run it through your sprayer, spray the, um, you, you should be able to spray and get good surface coverage. Um, always test your plants too. I mean, some plants could be super sensitive, but it's highly unlikely. This stuff is not really toxic to plants and it's not going to be toxic to you either in terms of burning on your skin. You might want to wear gloves, but you know, I've gotten it on my skin and it hasn't bothered me. You just wash your hands and it comes off. You do want to protect your eyes if you're using it in, you know, over your head or you're using a sprayer that's going to be really misting, you know, and you're going to have that stuff floating around. You probably want to protect your eyes because it would be irritating to your eyes. Um, but again, it's like the lye concentration is pretty low. It's not going to really bother your skin or your tissues. But it's like anything else. You just want to be safe when you're doing stuff, right? Okay. So let's mix it up and then we'll um, go down to the poop house and we'll take a look at the bug infestation and do a little spraying. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my rock dust solution. I'm just using a little, uh, little canning jar and probably the right thing to do here is to use like a tablespoon just to, so I don't spread it out all over the place. I want to make sure that I got four grams in. Oh, I got a little bit more. We'll just take a little bit of that out. I got like five grams. There we go, four grams. And now what I'm going to do is, is um, use my distilled water. Reaching back here. I mix this up first because it takes a few minutes for it to settle out. And I'm going to say 120 mil is about there. Yep, that's pretty close. It's 127 total, so four grams. So I'm a little bit more than 120, but I'm not going to sweat it. Okay, and I'm going to use this stainless steel knife and just kind of mix it up. You know, really, to be sure, I got it all mixed. And then I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to put this up here so it's out of my way. Uh, set that aside. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my, um, let me get my jar straight out here. I'm going to mix up my uh, potassium hydroxide. I'm going to zero my scale out here. Okay, potassium hydroxide. Very important that you get no water on it. Uh, I tend to try to use stainless steel or to try to just... Uh, this stuff is really absorbent of water, so you got to be careful. That's why you don't want to get lye, direct lye on your skin, because if you do you can kind of end up with problems. And see, I already goofed here. There we go. Four grams. Right there. Perfect. Okay. Um, got a little bit too much on something I shouldn't have done, but that's okay. Four grams. And seal this bad boy back up. Okay, now I'm going to put distilled water in here. Roughly about 50 grams. Just wait for the scale to be measured up here. Yeah, that's about right. 52 is close enough, right? And just mix it. Now, when you're mixing like potassium hydroxide to uh, sodium and sodium hydroxide, Never uh, add dry lye directly to water. What you want to do is you want to put the lye in a container dry, and then you want to add the water slowly to it. 
um, because the larger, particularly when you're dealing with larger amounts of this stuff, it does create a little bit of an exothermic reaction. And I, actually, when I feel the bottom of this thing, I can feel a little warmth. So uh, the more you would do that with, the more you would end up with, um, you know, something really bubbling over and that would not be pleasant. So always add water after you put the dry material in the container that you're going to be mixing to. And always leave yourself enough room that when you're dealing with something like that, you know, you're not filling it up to the tippy top. Uh, it's just an important safety tip. And don't get that stuff on your skin. Okay, that's it for measuring with a scale. Now we're going to start filling our container. So I'm going to zero this thing out and turn it off. There we go. All right. We talked about we're going to put in about a one and a half liter right here. And that gets me to, um, oops, I want that in there. Because I'm mixing up two liters of final spray. And let's see where I'm at here. All right, looks like I got a ways to go. There we go. All right, one and a half liters approximately. Okay. So now the first thing I'm going to put in is my extract. This was, uh, we did this in the uh, half pints. And the reason why is because once you open these things up, once they've been unsealed, and we did a video on how to make it and how we sealed them up, but uh, we store it in the fridge, any excess. And what I want to make certain is, is that this is mixed up pretty well. It looks like it. And uh, we're going to put in five charges of this. Each one's 12 milliliter. I'll probably lose count, but who knows. Come on, people, count along with me. That was four, right? Be five. And one more. No, five is what I want, isn't it? Five times 12 is 60. We're good. Five. Done, done, done. See? Almost got me on that one. Okay, so now we're going to put in our uh, wetting agent, and that'll be the next thing. Let me just grab that real quick. All right, so I got my soap in here. We'll do the same thing. We'll put in 5 times 12, which will give me 60. This soap I made actually two years ago, and I made a, a batch. It was about three gallons. So the stuff keeps really well. Uh, for a long period of time. There's three. And we'll go to five. Okay. Let me just set that aside. Okay, I'm going to give the thing a little mix here at this point because i got two ingredients in here. I just kind of want to make sure that that wetting agent is kind of moved around. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add is my sodium hydroxide, which you can now see is actually really well dissolved. I'll just make sure I get that all in there. It's actually potassium hydroxide. I keep calling it the wrong thing. Uh, the last thing we're going to do here is add in our suspended rock dust. Now what you can sort of kind of see is you can see that it's darker gray down at the bottom of it, although it may be hard to see, but most of what's here is just suspended in solution. And what I'm going to try to do here is um, kind of decant this off so that I, I leave the sediment in the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of do this a little slow so that I don't disturb it. Try to get it without losing too much of it. OK. 
okay. I still got I got sediment that's kind of building up on it. So I'll put this in here, and then I'll use my syringe to pull out any extra. So what we got in here is basically really fine stuff. If you can't get it all, it's really just getting as much of it as you can. Now, oh, well, let's see. I think I might have pulled some sediment. No, I guess I didn't. Now, other ways people could do this, you could say, well, why don't you just run it through a coffee filter? You know, well, that would also filter out the fines. So it's kind of like a... The whole point is you still want your, your fines. Now, you could use something that's maybe a little more porous. I think that's about it. I mean, there's a little bit left in there, but I got the majority of it. So, that's it. And then what you can see is left here. That's the sediment we were talking about. And rock dust sediment is pretty heavy stuff. So I'm going to see if I can just... No, that's just going to end up... I just end up making a mess. So we're just going to leave that alone. And that's it, basically, for the mixing at this point. You just top this off with two liters of water and get it to the two liter mark. Right there is my two liter mark. So I'm just going to be sure that I got it right up. And there we go. We now have a batch of spray that's good to go. Now, some people might ask, well, can you just mix this up in a large amount ahead of time? Well, I'd say, yeah, you could if you're going to be, uh, if you knew, like, as an example, you're going to be spraying a lot. Uh, you could mix a lot into a tank and use it. Now, you can't really keep it for more than several hours once you mix it up. Um, definitely, if it's been sitting around for an hour or so and you come back to use it, Definitely want to really agitate it to make sure it's all, you know, nothing settled out and everything is still in solution. And um, that's basically about it. Then we put our top on, which is a nice little sprayer. And this, this sprayer can kind of make things into a mist. So it's just a small compression sprayer and that's ready to go. So let's go down to the tunnel and uh, film what we're going to do. Okay, so these guys are really tricky in camouflaging themselves. Here's an example of uh, a looper that's left on here. There was actually quite a few more on this plant. You can kind of, if I zoom out here, you can kind of see that the damage to the plant was incredible. So let's just start and see what happens to this guy. You know, one of the things that we notice is look at the damage that these worms can do to leaves. And I've got some severe damage in a lot of these guys. Uh, hopefully they can grow out of it. This all happened in a very short period of time because the infestation of worms was so great. Okay, I'm going to hit this guy right here. you got to apologize my uh, filming with one hand and spraying with another. It's going to be a little jerky here. And what I want to do is I want to make sure the leaf and the insect is covered well. And you can see I'm kind of using a mist. And these guys are... These guys, these little loopers, they have uh, like really fine hairs on them. So I just want to make sure I get the plant all the way around. Because I've also got aphids. And this solution too will also take care of aphids. So I want to make sure I get under the leaves. Now, what we'll do is... We'll come, we'll come back and we'll watch this, but you can probably already see the, the worm is beginning to move. So he's already a little annoyed and irritated. So I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll check to see what he looks like. So this is just a couple minutes in and he's already starting to move because he's irritated. You can kind of see the head of it starting to move. And what you'll notice is in a few minutes as this stuff begins to dry on him, it's going to start to really get into his skin. So here's another one we caught, and you can kind of see, uh, he, he, I just sprayed him just a second ago, so we'll come back and check on him in a few minutes and see what he's doing. So this one is definitely starting to uh, die. Notice how he curled up, he was all stretched out straight, and he is not comfortable, he's trying to get out. 
and uh, he's probably not going to make it. Well, matter of fact, I know he's not going to make it. This is only a couple minutes after I sprayed, so maybe two or three minutes. It takes roughly about 10 minutes for this stuff to really just knock these worms down to the point where they just they just keel over and are uh, no longer with us. Well, he surely didn't like the uh, spray that was on the plants, but he's still not doing too well. He crawled off the leaf, and I can see that he's just, he's kind of struggling. So I don't think he has much left in him. Okay, it looks like this guy here is dead. He hasn't moved much in about the last 10, 15 minutes. So I'm just going to kind of, hey, he's still got a little life left in him. He hasn't got much, and he's definitely not feeding anymore. So, I think uh, we'll see. We'll check back here in about another another 10. I may not have got him coated good enough. I don't know. Sometimes these guys, when they're really suckered down against the plant, they almost like seal themselves in. So sometimes, it, you know, if stuff can get under their softer side, they kind of do better in, kill, in killing them faster. But as soon as they start you know, going along the stuff where it's sprayed, they kind of do themselves in too. So here's an example of another one. And this guy, I just sprayed him about a minute ago and he's starting to move. He was really hunkered down there. And so I think he's totally annoyed and irritated. It The stuff does work. It takes, you know, a bit of time, 10 minutes, maybe a little longer for these guys to, you know, get to the point where they kind of, don't function anymore. They definitely stop eating right away. Okay, so I'm kind of looking at it and going, well, when I first came out and sprayed on, on uh, Monday morning with the same uh, material, and I had a huge infestation. I mean, every plant had maybe 10 plus or more of these worms of various different sizes crawling all over them. I mean, it was an amazing thing how fast these things just took off from not even being noticeable to you know, pretty massive damage. Let me just show you again one of the plants and, and you know, that had damage here, and it's pretty impressive how fast these guys are able to do their, their work. So the larger worms, you know, basically skeletize. They just took an entire leaf and they just demolish it. And those are the ones that are, are probably the guys that are about, you know, uh, I guess you'd call them approximately. Well, like if you just zoom in here, you can see this guy right here. You can see this guy, he's starting to die. And you can see the length and the size of him. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take long. You can miss a smaller worm the day before. And, you know, within 24, 48 hours, they're, they're, they're you know, well on their way to be even bigger than they were the day before. So my spraying equipment maybe isn't necessarily the best, you know, in terms of getting good coverage on things. So I really kind of have to work at that. And here's another leaf over here. And this guy here is, is uh, he's not doing too well. He's definitely slowed down. So anyway, here's another shot of that guy I sprayed a little bit ago. He's pretty much on his way out the door. He's not looking very good. He's moving kind of slow. And he's just, uh, as, this, as this insecticidal soap, and the mixture begins to dry on them, that's when it's going to penetrate the skin. And you can kind of see, you know, there's some penetration going on. There's a lighter color on his underneath side, which I really didn't get a good spray on. But the top side of them is definitely coated, and it's turning a darker green. So like I was saying, it this is taking multiple applications where, uh, you know, like when you're using something like BT, it, it's expensive, but it also tends to, you know, go specifically after these kinds of worms and they stop feeding almost, you know, pretty, pretty close to almost immediately. And then as the newer ones come out, the BT does linger for a few days on the leaves. So you can get, you know, maybe, you know, one application give you five to 10 days of protection. And so there's a plus to that, but the, the positive side, to, to the Jadam solution is I may have to do applications like once every other day till the population's really under control. And then it's a matter of kind of looking at the cycle of the insect, you know, in terms of how, how often they're active 
and you know how often I have to kind of do this. And again, you know, as the plants were weakened, they also got nailed by aphids. But this material, being that a major component of it is insecticidal soap, it knocked those aphids down just lickety split. So I've really got that problem under control. Um, major advantage to this also too is there's nothing in here that's toxic, which is the same thing with BT. It's not really toxic to people. But the materials used on it, um, you know, I can buy a jug of the potassium hydroxide or if I needed to, to go out and buy sodium hydroxide and I could, you know, I'm, I'm using pennies of it in a batch. The extract from the eucalyptus I made myself. Um, the soap, like I said, I made like a three gallon batch of it two years ago. I'm still working on it. So when you start looking at the cost of your um, spray material, it's, and for the effectiveness of it, it's actually pretty good. I mean, if I just sprayed BT, I'd still have to come back and buy insecticidal soap and apply that to get rid of the aphids. So this is kind of nice in the sense that it's, it's general enough that it's taking down, you know, two birds with one stone. And um, I've really, you know, even after the first application, I, I've knocked the population of loopers down you know, when I go through the things I showed you today, it is nothing compared to what it was about two days ago. So uh, this is going to be kind of a, you know, obviously there's eggs and stuff that I might have missed in terms of, I've tried to get sprayed under the leaves, but this particular little piece of spray equipment I'm using is probably not the right thing to do. But it does put out a fine mist so you get good coating. So, you know, if, I probably should use my bigger sprayer, but I, I don't need like, you know, two gallons of spray. So it's kind of like one of those things where um, I, it's a kind of a spot application situation going on, but the spray equipment, it may be not as effective or delivers with enough velocity to get enough good coating everywhere, particularly once you're coating the insects to actually, you know, drive that spray, you know, into the crevasses of the insect or, you know, underneath the insect. So they're thoroughly coated. So I'm kind of relying a bit on, on the fact that maybe I have to go back and I have to hit this more often than I would have. That's my theory on it anyway. Um, I am impressed that, that it really did uh, on the first day when I first did it, uh, I knocked these guys for a loop really fast. And the nice thing about it too is it's, you know, there's no toxicity to it. And you think about what's in it is I got potassium in it and I've got um, potassium in the soap and there is a little bit of mineral in the basalt rock dust. And so actually as this material uh, breaks down, it, it really, you know, acts as probably a foliar nutrient for the plant. If it, if it, We'll just see, you know, how the plants respond. I, I have noticed that, you know, since I've obviously got these guys uh, on their heels, that the plants are starting to put out new growth. So hopefully, you know, what we're going to look at here in a week or two, this will look totally different and I can start harvesting on it. So that was about it. Um, when you look at it, I mean, there's pluses and minuses. You can use BT. It's probably more effective faster with fewer applications. Um, I don't know faster so much as, as it, it doesn't require uh, as many applications uh, as, as uh, the Jadam did in this particular case because I, I was infested. And, uh, you know, in hindsight, what I really should have probably done would have helped tremendously if I just would have used insect, insect netting over this. I probably would have prevented the whole problem to begin with. And, but, you know, that's like I said, uh, it's shutting the barn door after the cows are out. So not much I can do about that. But this was a really cost-effective way of, of doing it. I mean, it probably cost pennies to make, you know, a two-liter batch of this stuff. And uh, most of the stuff, you know, I, like I said, if, if I've already made the soap, which I had three gallons of it, been working on it for two years. So, you know, you tells you right there with the scale I'm at that you can make this stuff, you know, pretty cheap. Uh, as opposed to, you know, going out and buying stuff, I would have had to buy two things. I would have had to get something with BT and I would have had to get some insecticidal soap to probably knock the aphids down or, or something else if, you know, mixed with that insecticidal soap to, to nail the aphids. Uh, but this did a really good job and that, that was a, a, a plus. So 
I've had done two applications on this uh, so far, and I'm probably going to end up doing a third. I just got to keep an eye on it for a few days till uh, you know whatever hatches. If something does continue to hatch, that I make sure I nail them before they they get to size and you know continue the damage that they've been doing. So want to thank you guys for watching and uh, appreciate your comments. As always, stay safe out there. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye bye.